all Beverly and I are motoring to Douglas. Both Beverly and I hate it, which is why we're not blogging much. Um, but um, we, I, I basically steered us around uh, Langless Point and I was doing about eight knots under engine. Um, Salty Lass goes normally about four knots. So, you know, four knots of tide, I'm happy enough with that. Um, and um, that's about it really. It's just a bookend to say we're off to Douglas. Okay, well we're in Douglas and um, the waiting pontoon um, isn't here. That happens when there's been a particular storm from um, the easterly. Is that easterly? Uh, basically from behind us uh, because um, the waiting pontoon becomes untenable. So what they do is they remove it just so that people don't go on to it. Um, and um, instead we're moored up against on these ropes um, and we're just waiting for the biff and we're just waiting for the bridge to lift. Wow, it's a mayhem and madness here on Salty Alaska's Have we got on board? I'm back! <laughs> We've got the uh, wine o'clock flag flying and uh, we're here to party and sail and generally enjoy ourselves. Don't forget about the gin and tonic. <laughs> there, are, there is no gin and tonic. There is, I bought a bottle, bottle yeah. of tankery. Yeah, but we'll never see it. <laughs> well, you may have some. Bev doesn't like it either. Whiskey, would you like some whiskey? No, I'll have some wine, I'll pass out from that. All right, do you drink whiskey or brandy or anything like that? No, not really. All right, well, so I'm the only naughty one then. <laughs> yeah, run Gainer, run. <laughs> Obviously not! Obviously not! Well, Beverly and I came down to Castletown because I'm actually quite fascinated by little harbours and little places that you can go but there's no way that we could bring Salty Lass here. You nearly need to be a yacht that can take the ground. Basically a little bilger um, because it dries out and um, you know you're going to be sitting on mud at some point uh, during um, a 12 hour cycle. Also with the wrong wind direction um, you can get a lot of swell coming into this little harbour however there is another little harbour which is again you need to take the ground which is just off um, this, this little harbour here uh, and that would have a different direction uh, for the winds. But again, you need to be able to take the ground to come here. Prudence is going to be so cheerful, so jealous. Ellen here has got a deck chair. So jealous. <laughs> well, we've come to Port Erin. We've come by train rather than sailboat because we've been told that if there's any west in the wind whatsoever, you can't come in here. And we can see what that means. There's a sailboat just over there and you can see, and it's rocking up and down quite a bit on the swell. There are three mirroring balls. Uh, I thought there was two, but it seems to be three. And they're bouncing around quite um, quite a bit as well. The bay, to my mind, looks a lot less deep. It doesn't come in as far to the land as I thought it did on the pilotage. So I can see why it's quite exposed to any westerly winds. But I imagine in an easterly wind or a northerly, it would be quite a nice spot to be. But I think to come to this place for a sailboat, you've really got to pick your weather. And if the weather's not good, 
you might be better advised just going up the coast another two hours for Peel. had one minor upset that we hadn't considered and that is that the, um, the tide is so low that it's not lifting us and we're actually sitting on the bottom and couldn't leave so we've had to sit here for another hour waiting for the tide to lift us and fingers crossed this time it's going to happen it's never happened before has it no um I'll come in uh truthfully though the first one uh we couldn't go out because we had no um, depth under the keel but the second one uh they decided not to do the lift because they had a uh, commercial vessel out in the outer harbour and it was either going to be a choice of um, go out and do circles for uh, three quarters of an hour or sit down here having tea. <laughs> yeah, so the choice like have a cup of tea or go around in circles. <laughs> cup of tea one. Bit of a no-brainer. <laughs> so now it's a full hour but we have got uh, 0.4 under the keel. Hey! So, so we're, not, we're not sitting on the bottom anymore. So we're not sitting on the bottom anymore, so we've got plenty of depth. The sea state changes a couple hundred metres ahead of us. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to um, <sighs> take the main out, won't we? Yeah. Well, we'll see. Well, that's why I said to look the after the sheet went. or anything. Um, yeah, but we'll have to come off this and left the main will have to go on that, won't it? Well, we'll see. No, Karen, This the, the way that our main is configured, um, I can... We can do it by hand. I can, we, we, I we can do the main by hand. hand. Oh, so it doesn't need to have to go on the winch? No, the main does not need oh, to go okay. on the winch. We have a six-way block on it. Okay. So it's never too much stress. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, anyway, we are sailing um, in the early evening. Just going to go down to Port St. Mary with Karen. Um, but um, it's so much nicer to be sailing than Not motoring. Not forecast, but we've got 14 knots of it. Yeah, so as, as you know, Beverly doesn't trust the forecast, but there was no wind forecast, but we've got 14 knots. As far as we're concerned. They can't even get it right six hours ahead. <laughs> anyway, we're sailing so we're happy. We spent the night in Port St Mary and the next morning we were off to catch the tide through Calf Sound. <laughs> Are you taking a rest there mate? Oh she's returned. You wonder where you vanished to? <laughs> You're right down there. Come on up. I'm just checking the turn of the gas off. Yeah. That's why I painted that big stripe on it. I'm glad you had interaction. It was as windless to the north of the island as it was to the south of the island. So we were condemned to a long run under motor and we amused ourselves by relaxing, drinking tea and dodging larger vessels.
after passing through Donoghadee Sound, we entered Belfast Lock and were lucky to pick up some wind. Eventually, we made it back to Ballyhome Bay, where we dropped the anchor for a well-earned rest. Mm -hmm.